That said, we want to welcome once again uh, defensive coordinator Jay Neiman uh, to the Discover Orange Bowl press conference this morning. And coach, you've had a few days to be here in South Florida to uh, continue preparations for the Discover Orange Bowl. How are things going for your team over the past few days? Oh, it's been going really good. Our players have enjoyed all the festivities. Everybody's been really cordial and outgoing and everything's been first class. Uh, we've had several good practices that we've been able to get under our belt and uh, everything's off to a great start so we couldn't be happier with where we're at. Okay, we can raise our hands. We'll open up the questions to the media. Over here to your right in the front row. Hey Jay, uh, Tom D'Angelo, Palm Beach Post. Can you uh, talk about Florida State's offense, the, the dynamic of it? They have you know, so many skilled guys. You can do so, we have so many guys who can be kind of game breakers and also and specifically EJ and your thoughts on EJ Manuel. Specific, I'm uh, sorry. EJ e. Manuel. Well, he, he, he's where it all starts. Um, every great offense, almost every great offense has a great quarterback within it. And, uh, you know, obviously when you throw 22 touchdowns and for over 3,000 yards and complete 67% of your passes, you're doing some things pretty well. Uh, so he's, he's a great talent. He's a great player. Um, but like you said, there's lots of other guys within that offensive system that, that have a lot to do with his numbers and his production. And uh, there's great running backs within the system. Uh, they're tied into O'Leary, I think, is a little bit of an overlooked player, uh, particularly in their two-back uh, package offensively. Uh, as far as what he does in the pass game for them. And then the receivers, uh, they've got a stable full of guys right there that have great size and speed and can go up and get the ball. So um, like any good offense, uh, at this point in time, when you're winning 11 and 12 games and getting into BCS Bowls, you're going to see offenses that are tough to defend because they have multiple weapons. And um, you know certainly they do. And, and uh, that's the challenge for us, to get them bottled up. Uh, we're right down in the front center. Coach Dieter Kurtenbach with the Sun Sentinel. I'm interested in your thoughts on this bowl game. Obviously, there's a lot of hoopla that goes along with it, something that Northern Illinois really hasn't experienced before. What is the toughest part about being a coach in a situation where you're getting athletes going into you know, beach parties and going to South Beach? What's the toughest part about getting them to focus for practice, specifically when you have an opponent like Florida State? Well, our players have done a great job in that area. This is obviously something we've discussed before we ever got on the plane to come down here. Um, they, they came to win this game. Uh, they came to compete. They came to, to play. And uh, all the events that are going on, in addition to the game itself, uh, are important. They're fun. We want them to take part of those things and, and, and uh, be involved. But uh, at the end of the day, it, it comes back to getting ready to go to practice, getting ready to go to meetings, getting ready to compete and play in the game. And I think they do a good job of understanding when that switch needs to come on and off and uh, staying focused. We don't have to say a great deal to them because I think we've got a veteran club with good leadership, uh, a lot of good junior and senior uh, players that have been through this in other bowls before and understand that um, you know, even though this is a BCS Bowl and it's a bigger in terms of magnitude and some of those kinds of things, that the process is still the same and that uh, they, they, they do understand that, the, you know, the focus is necessary and when they got to turn that switch on and off. They've done a great job with it. But I think just handling the balance of that, um, making sure that they can enjoy the things that they've been able to go do uh, off the field, um, it's important to be able to take that in. But at the same time, when it comes time to practice and play, they'll be ready to do that. Personally, I don't think it's been more difficult. Um, you know, this, this is the second bowl um, that, that I've been to with NIU since we've only been here two years, obviously. Um, but again, it's a BCS bowl. The magnitude of the game is greater and all those types of things, but the process is still the same in terms of the player's preparation, um, knowing when it's time to practice, when it's time to play, when it's time to meet, separating those things from all the other events that go on along with it. Now we'll go one seat behind that last question. Hi, Jay. Fred Mitchell from the Chicago Tribune. Uh, there's been so much uh, national attention, obviously, about Northern's offense and Jordan Lynch in particular. And yet the defense of, of, uh, of the Huskies has really improved, especially from last year. Just, just talk about the, the pride factor of the entire unit to, uh, to get the recognition that they deserve as well. Well, uh, 
they have improved, and I appreciate your comments on that. Um, I think our players really don't care, honestly, where that credit goes or who gets it. Um, one thing about Jordan Lynch, uh, he's as, as humble and as gracious a person as you're going to find. It makes it very easy for our players to, uh, uh, on defense, uh, to, to hear the things that are said about him, to see the things that are written because he's just one of the guys. Uh, he'd be just as close with the defensive players as he is the offensive players, and so I don't think that the, the issue of you know, who's getting credit or any of those things is a factor with our team. They just want to win. They want to compete. They want to do well. And however we get that done, whether it's winning 40 to 39 or whether it's winning 7 to 3, uh, you know, at the end of the day, a win is a win. And, and uh, so that's what they've been about. Um, we have improved a great deal defensively. Our kids have taken a lot of pride in that process. It started all the way back last spring. Uh, when we came off of, uh, you know, the signing date and recruiting and started to get into spring practice, and I think that's where the foundation was laid uh, for where we've gone with this defense. Uh, the players have done everything that we've asked of them in order to get to where they are right now and uh, have done a great job, you know, throughout spring, summer, and fall and uh, have put together a good year. So uh, I don't know if that answers your question directly enough, but um, we're, we're um, like I say, we're, we're just about going and playing as a team. We'll go to your right in the front row. Hey, Jay, Charlie McCarthy, Fox Sports Florida. Uh, how has Rod getting the head job affected you, both in terms of maybe planning and just your relationship, personal relationship with him? Well, I couldn't be more happy for him. Uh, let me just say that from the outset. Uh, what a great opportunity for him and, uh, you know, very deserving of this opportunity. So uh, we're, we're thrilled for him to, to be in the position that he's in. Uh, he's an offensive-minded guy, of course, and at this point in time, you know, with only a couple weeks between the announcement of him being the head coach and us being in this game, it's not like he could um, become a defensive-minded coach or get too involved in our planning because of the terminology and just the, the X's and O's of what we've done over the course of 12 weeks. You just don't pick that up in a week to 10 days or two weeks. So you know, he's plugged in and he's given us his thoughts and things that uh, pertain to the game and the preparation. Uh, but by and large, it's been myself and the other defensive staff members who have put the plan together and, uh, you know, have set up the practices and done all the drill work and things with the players to get them ready. But, uh, you know, after playing 12 or 13 games, you kind of do what you do on both sides of the ball. Things aren't apt to change a great deal outside of the little wrinkles that you have each week for a game plan. So, um, you know, whether Coach Dorn was still here or whether he wasn't here, I don't know whether that would have changed too much what we're doing for this game. All the way over to your right, third row. Jay, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN.com. Uh, your, your pass rush obviously has been uh, strong this year. What's contributed to that? And then what, what type of challenges will it pose trying to rush uh, a guy like E.J. Manuel? Well, I appreciate that. Uh, we've done a great job trying to pressure the quarterback with four guys. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with just their maturity and their um, experience within our system. Uh, last year, obviously, being our first year, there's a, a learning curve there that you have to go through. And I think you've seen the, the, the curve, um, you know, go from a, uh, kind of the infancy stages to where we're really polished at what we're doing now. Um, they, they do a great job just understanding what they're being taught by uh, Ryan Nielsen, our D-line coach. And um, we have a plan every week for how we're going to try to pressure the quarterback, uh, you know, in passing situations. And so those guys have done a great job getting that plan down and executing it on, on game day. Um, with E.J. Manuel, obviously his – foot speed and his size present some different uh, issues that, that you might not face with other quarterbacks other weeks. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to consider bringing a fifth rusher at times if that's what the, the down and distance and field position situations call for. Um, and if not, then we just got to do a great job with our rush lane ratios and compressing the pocket and keeping him in there. And when he gets out, then we got to have a way to get him contained with linebackers and, and uh, you know, Try to make sure that he's not throwing the ball down the field and hurting us, uh, you know, with uh, by running and throwing, um, you know, hurting us with his feet because he can do that too. So, um, big challenge, but uh, we'll have our ways to schematically keep him contained. We're gonna go immediately in front of you in the back row. Hey, Jay, Steve Gordon with South Florida Sun Sentinel. Could you talk a little bit, please, about your uh, four South Florida guys that you have, uh, Jamal, Ken. Uh, Victor and Demetrius, uh, a little bit about each of those four and, and what impact they've had in terms of the success of your defense. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Jamal Bass is uh, 
been a, a linebacker that's played a different couple different spots for us. Our linebackers are we have a middle linebacker and then the other two are field and boundary. Uh, Jamal's done both field and and boundary backer, so he's he's a multiple guy. He also can play the mic and nickel and dime packages for us. So uh, for a young guy, he's really caught on the system and done well. Um, I think he's a really good tackler. He's a, a guy that moves really well for uh, this, it has a great skill set for what we're, we're asking him to do within our scheme. And uh, he's still a young player within our system, but uh, highly productive. And you know, not only has he had a good year, but we're looking for a couple more good years to come from him um, you know, one, once this season's behind us. Uh, Ken Bishop is a, a tremendous inside player for us, um, a, a guy who I have tremendous respect for. He, he commands a lot of double teams uh, up front, uh, very physical player. And is a guy who also moves extremely well for a 300-pounder. And uh, he's been a great addition to our football team and has had a lot to do with our success in terms of not only pass rush, but what we've been able to do in terms of uh, stopping other people's run game. So you know, we're really pleased with him. And he's been off to, to a, just an exceptional start for a first-year player in our program. Uh, Demetrius Stone is, is jack of all trades. He's played everything on the back end. He's played corner. He's played safety. He's played nickel. Uh, very, very intelligent player and a very gifted player. I just can't say enough good things about him. He was a defensive back of the year for us um, in terms of our uh, postseason awards uh, at our banquet. Just a really complete player and uh, just invaluable to us because he just has such great command of what we're doing in our coverages and where people uh, need to be able to get to, to be lined up appropriately and all those kinds of things. And, and a real pleasure to coach, just a great young man. Uh, who was the other? Was it Victor. Yeah, Victor, our Mike Backer, Victor Jaquez is just uh, a really a treat. He's got a, a great personality. He's a lot of fun. He's just uh, thrilled to be back home playing this game. Has battled through some injuries this year, which is, have made it tough for him at times. There's a couple games he missed, a couple games he wasn't full speed. Uh, but he's battled through it. He's played hard. Um, he's been a great guy for the chemistry of our defense, as, you know, in terms of his leadership qualities. And, of course, any good 4-3 defense has to have kind of a bell cow Mike linebacker. And uh, he, he's been just that for us. Mm -hmm. right, we're now going to go to your left in the second row. Matt Hopkinson, Northern Star. Can you just talk about the difference Tyrone Clark has made being back this season after missing last season? Who was that? Tyrone Clark. Tyrone Clark. Uh, Tyrone's had a great year. And uh, we were very thankful to get him back this year. And uh, he, he's been very productive. Again, he's got great leadership qualities. Uh, has been able to play both field and boundary backer for us, just like Jamal Bass has been. And a uh, very, very steady guy. Uh, physical player, good tackler. Uh, plays well in space, which would be important in this game. And, uh, you know, he's, he's had a really, really solid year for us. And, and uh, just to have him back in the lineup from a leadership standpoint, again, has meant a great deal to our defense and our chemistry and where we've been able to take this. We'll go one seat behind that last question on your left. Hey, Jay, Steve Nitz, the Cal Daily Chronicle. Uh, how many of your guys do you think have serious NFL talent, and how could a, a strong performance Tuesday uh, help them uh, in terms of performance for the scouts, stuff like that? Well, I've been doing this over 20 years now, and what I can tell you is uh, what an NFL scout sees might be completely different than what I see. Sometimes uh, there's, gonna, there's surprises every year. Uh, guys you think might be of that at that level don't get taken, and other guys you might not think are do get taken. So I, I'm going to leave that up to them. Uh, we have a lot of good football players in our system that are that are worthy of that kind of consideration. And um, you know where that all goes, I guess we'll find out when spring rolls around and, and we get to that. Um, you know, I just it's kind of like recruiting. You know, in recruiting, sometimes high school coaches don't understand what college guys see. And I think at the NFL level, sometimes college guys don't see what NFL people see. Uh, so we're just going to let that play out and let them make those decisions. But as um, far as a game of this magnitude, you know, scouts are very thorough in what they do. They're going to look at every game we play. They may look at this one with a little bit different uh, light on it just because of, you know, the caliber of the team that Florida State is. And certainly our players understand that, you know, if they – are in consideration for those types of uh, opportunities when, when college is over with, that playing well in this game will be important to them. 
right, we are going to keep Coach Neiman up here at the uh, table for a little while longer. At the same time, we're going to open the player interview room, which is directly behind you. It's Sean Progar, uh, Jimmy Ward, Tyrone Clark, Demetrius Stone, and Victor Jaquez. If anyone wants, wants to make your way over there. The next Northern Illinois media availability after, these press con after this press conference is uh, after and during practice. Practice is at Barry University at 2.40, photo and video first 15 minutes, and interviews at 4 o'clock. So uh, as the media makes their way out of the room, we will continue with the Thank questions you. here in the front row to your right. Okay. And Jay, I just had one more, and that is when you first started watching the film on Florida State, what impressed you the most? Well, just their overall athleticism and team speed and their balance. Again, uh, it's a lot easier to defend an offense when maybe they're just a, a running football team or if they're just a passing football team. Uh, but when they present the balance that Florida State does, I think that's where your challenges come into play. They're putting up about 460 yards a game, uh, just a little over 200 on the ground and about 260 through the air. So, um, you know, again, that. That, that's the thing that jumps out at you. They can move the ball a variety of ways with a lot of different people. And um, so with multiple weapons, that creates uh, issues within your game plan that make it more difficult than, you know, when there's maybe only one or two star players on a team. So as a follow-up, are, are you trying to make them, like, do you kind of go in figuring they're going to get some yardage, you just have to make them work for it? Or is it try to stop what you can, and if you give up a big play here or there, it happens. But like, what's the mindset on a high level as you go in? Well, I don't, I don't think we go into a game ever feeling like we want to give up a big play, and I'm sure that's not what you're implying. But um, we're going to try to make them earn what they get. And uh, that doesn't mean we won't take our chances here and there as far as blitzing, doing the things that, you know, you might have to do to get out of a down and distance situation and force them to punt the ball so you can get off the field and get your offense, um, you know, back on the field with good field position. That just has to be uh, determined by down and distance. And, field position situations and some of those types of things. But uh, we got to tackle well in space. We got to leverage the ball well. Uh, we got to make sure that uh, if they get yards, they're, they're yards that are earned. And we can't uh, let runs break out. We can't let balls be thrown over our head. Uh, we, what we call explosive plays. You know, we really have to limit those. All right, mm -hmm. Coach, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. The next o Discover Orange Bowl press conference will be tomorrow morning thank at you. 8 a.m.